Off a little early this morning. Got a busy day ahead. Ought to do something about that paunch. Not as slim as you were in college. Ought to exercise a bit, maybe. But when? You've been so busy lately. Really should watch that diet. But got to stoke the furnace for that busy day ahead. Besides, a good workout will help burn that food off. If you only had time to take one. But you've been so busy lately. This man is getting ready for a busy day himself. command pilot for Gemini 12, the last mission of Project Gemini. On this mission, pilot Buzz Aldrin stepped into space for the longest period man has spent outside his spacecraft. Lovell flew Gemini 7 with his command pilot Frank Borman during man's first rendezvous in space. The other spacecraft, Gemini 6, piloted by Wally Schirra and Tom Stafford. Before Gemini 7 splashed down, Borman and Lovell had set an endurance record for sustained spaceflight, 14 days weightless in the cramped Gemini spacecraft. These two missions gave Jim Lovell the record for time one man has spent in space. to be in pretty good shape for a mission like that. You're two weeks in basically the same sitting position and weightless, and there's no real way to exercise your legs. We've got to be in shape just to be able to walk on Earth again. Of course, I've got to admit that when the mission's over, you're tired and glad to be down okay, and the physical training program kind of goes out the window for a few weeks. And just like everyone else, we have a hard time getting back to it again. But while we need to keep fit for the same reason as other people, I've got to admit some aspects of our job and working conditions are just a little bit different.
obvious that it's important to our astronauts to stay in good physical shape. But this is only a small part of their professional life. 80% of their time is spent in other work. Now, take yourself. What do you have in common with an astronaut? For instance, you start the day by getting into the elevator and going up to the office. Here's the first difference. The astronauts use the stairs instead of the elevator. It's a little thing, but little things add up. Using the stairs is kind of a point of honor. Getting caught using the elevator is like getting caught with your hand in a cookie jar. But back to you. First thing, you check with your secretary. Of course, you share her with three other men, but you're still on the way up. A few telephone calls to answer. And on top of everything else, a staff meeting. So you get those calls out of the way so you can get some work done. Ten minutes to go before the staff meeting. Just time enough to initial a few reports and read the interesting ones. Now when an astronaut like Jim Lovell gets to work in the morning, his day starts something like this. I guess our office routine is kind of like everybody else's. Telephone calls to return, pilots meetings, reports to read, reports to get out. Everybody thinks of us mainly as flying spacecraft. So we spend a lot more time, most of it in fact, flying a swivel chair. You don't think much about being in shape for this kind of work, but when you're getting ready for a mission, your work week is more like 60 or 70 hours rather than 40. You've got to be in shape just to take that kind of grind and stay alert. Staff meetings. They may be important, but they aren't always the most fascinating things in the world. Now, Ed over there, he's got the job you hope to have before too long. He's on his way up. Of course, he's got an ulcer doing it, special diet and all that. Come to think about it, you've been having a little indigestion yourself, but that's not an ulcer yet. Probably some of that rich food you've been eating, and a little overweight. Nothing to worry about. After all, you're not really fat. Not like Mr. Haskins was when he had his heart attack. He must have lost about 40 pounds since then. Doctor put him on a diet and regular exercise. He sure looks a lot better now. It might not be a bad idea to get started on some kind of exercises yourself before anything like that happens. But it's kind of hard getting started. I guess meetings and briefing sessions are about the most time-consuming part of our job. This is where we get the word, you might say, about what's going on and what we're expected to do. And this means meetings all over the country, not just at Houston. Right now, for instance, Wally Schraw, Don Isley, and Walt Cunningham are in a three-day session out in Downey, California. Gordo Cooper is getting an astronomy briefing at Moorhead Planetarium in North Carolina. And Tom Stafford's on his way to a lunar module design review on Long Island. After a good morning's work, lunch. Greatest restaurant in town. Sure doesn't help the old figure much, though. Take Larry now. He puts away enough food for two men and doesn't gain a pound. Of course, he works out at the health club twice a week. Took you once, too. Felt pretty good, but it's rough keeping that kind of thing up. When do you get the time? We work out in the gym for about an hour every day. Mike Collins is kind of the handball shark of the astronauts. The other day, he suggested we play for a glass of juice. I told him we'd play one game, and whatever he beat me by would be my handicap for the next match. Well, he beat me 21 to 3. So he spotted me 18 points and beat me again. Of course, handball isn't the only thing we do, although it's probably the most fun. You know, some of the bigger industries are putting in stress labs. That's government tees for a gym. They figure they want their executives especially to be in good shape. 
you can figure out how much it means to them to have a key man out sick or not able to work up the capacity. That's about the way we work it. The astronaut physical training program is up to each individual. You haven't been looking forward to this, telling the foreman you're pulling three men off his crew. Hard on the stomach. Sometimes you envy the men on the heavy jobs. At least their job keeps them in shape. Sometimes the assignments we pull keep us in shape by themselves. Like Dave Scott, he's been climbing in and out of a lunar module underwater, wearing a space suit and a backpack, trying to figure out easier and better ways to do it in space, and, by the way, on the moon. But then there's John Young. He's been sitting in classes all week, and now he's got to fly up to Boston for guidance to some briefing at MIT. I guess uh, most people know we're jet pilots. A lot of the time, we have to fly our own jets in order to make the schedule. we're not going to tell you that you have to be in the same kind of shape to drive a car as to fly a jet. After all, for your speed, what kind of reflexes do you need? to relax after a long day. Finished with the paper, might as well read this pamphlet you picked up someplace. Some propaganda from the President's Council on Physical Fitness. That kind of tweaks the old conscience. They are right. You really should get started on some kind of regular exercises. Maybe tonight, uh, before you go to bed. Yeah. You're still kind of worn out right now, but later. President's Council. Yeah, they got some good points. Some astronaut heading it up. Now, they live interesting lives. You know, we're pretty well motivated to keep in shape, but like anybody else, we have a hard time getting started. Of course, once you're in a way in a regular program, it's pretty easy to keep it up. I'll tell you where it gets tough, though when you're on the road, like John Young is now, and like all of us are most of the time. But when you know that staying in shape and keeping healthy can make the big difference to you in the program, you do it. I guess maybe it's the same in other businesses. The guy who doesn't get sick all the time and who keeps up is the guy who gets ahead. Of 
they've got the right idea. Get going on a regular program of exercises. Might even kind of help that indigestion you've been having lately. Ah, oh, but that's probably just nerves. Well, it was a nice try, but starting exercises just before bed when you're really bushed isn't easy, you know. And you're a little young for heart trouble. Anyway, you're not that fat. Still, the President's Council on Physical Fitness does have the right idea. Maybe tomorrow. That's right, get started tomorrow. Maybe it won't be such a busy day. Thank you.